Oh. Hey guys, what's up, Caballo? You're making fun of my word pontificate. How you guys doing? Is lighting okay? Lighting okay? Until I get a lamp stand, this is the best lighting I can get. All right, remember, I got an Ethernet cable. It's now hooked up to the, what is it called? The modem in the router. And therefore, yesterday we had great success. It only buffered about two, three times for a few seconds, and it was smooth. So I'm trusting by the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm trusting by the grace and mercy of our triumph God, Father, Son, Spirit, in his mercy and love, we found the solution to the buffering. And we're going to get top-notch connection so that I can be used by the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ and bless you guys. So expect it to buffer a few times, but I did what you did. I gave in to your demands. I got an Ethernet cable that came with the modem. I hooked it up. It's right here. I'm looking at it. You gorgeous beast, you. And it's hooked up. All right. Now, don't mind my coffee-stained teeth. I just finished drinking coffee. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think YouTube likes me. It never notifies people when I'm going live. Now, here's another problem. Here's another problem. My dear friend and brother in Christ, Christian Prince, is about to go live in half an hour. I didn't know that because though I'm subscribed to his channel, I didn't get the announcement. So I'm going to be competing with a guy who, like David Wood, gets over 900 people. And I'm panhandling for about 100. At one time, we, we went up to 160, but because I blocked half the people, I'm down to 100. <laughs> Mo Larry G's. How do I look, guys? Keep praying for me. Now that I'm settled in my apartment and everything is falling in place, pray for me in Jesus' name. I can get back in the gym by his grace and mercy, get back into the gym, start doing cardio, because I got to still lose that 50 pounds and keep it off and get some muscle tone. Thank the Lord he's given me the grace not to gain any weight. Any weight. I, I cannot be gaining weight. I need to lose more weight, get healthier by his grace and mercy. But more importantly, the most important thing, pray for me and one another that by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, we get holier. We become more pure, more righteous, more holy, more fearful, more worshipful, to pray more, to fast more, to study the word, memorize the word, to live out the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot love Jesus Christ enough. The most important thing in our life on this side of glory is holiness and righteousness and purity. Obedience to the Lord. Loving the Lord. Honoring the Lord. Singing to the Lord. Praising the Lord. Praying to the Lord. Living his word and loving each other by our deeds. And pray for that for me. I need to be a doer, not a hypocrite. So that we do more <clears throat> deeds of love. Taking care of those who are truly present. We need to do that. See, in Jesus' name. See, I told you it's going to buffer, but it's shorter than normal. And in Jesus' name, it's going to get stronger and stronger. So don't worry. The buffering is very minimum. Glory to God. So don't be scared, okay? Don't be scared. It's going to buffer here and there. But it's much better, right? And I hope it gets better. We need to be visiting people who are sick and in prison. We need to. It's not an option. It's a command. So pray for me and pray for each other that we do a lot more of that. And we need to do a lot more fighting for the rights of the unborn children. We need to be their voices for the sake of Jesus. Right? Okay, hold on. Let me see. All right. Let's see. I don't know, folks. Don't go changing. All right. This is the second time I'm here by the modem. If it gets really bad, then you know it's not the modem. It's not the DNS. It's just my life stinks. Hopefully it gets better. So I moved it closer to the modem. Let's see. Yep, it's in. All right, yeah, I don't see that. Let's see, guys. Let's trust. How you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, you kind of misspelled some words, but I could read it. Hey, brother, I have the Ethernet cable hooked up, man. What's wrong with you? It's right here. It's plugged in. I plugged it in as far as I could go. Now La, 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 la. There we go again. I don't know what's happening. What do you mean you wonder if the Wi-Fi is still off? It's on. My Wi-Fi is on. I don't know what you mean. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here you go, Protestant. I want you to see. See, there you go. You see? 
Do you see it? Let's see. Hold on. Let's see if it's here. Do you see it? I don't know. All right, let's see. You see it's in. You see that? You see? It's in all the way, buddy. Does that look good? Let's see. Okay, hold on. Does that look good? It's right here. You see? It's all the way in. How does that look? Okay. Okay. So how does that look, buddy? And so that's what it is. All righty then. Let's see what my speed is. Yeah, if it's done, I'm done with this. I'm going to call Comcast to cancel. We'll see. That's it. I'm done with Comcast if it doesn't work today. Sorry, guys. I'm doing I'm going to go back to Child of God for now. Let me just do this. I don't know, man. I've tried everything under the sun. Let me know if it buffers. Hold on. Let me see the speed. Okay. Who knows? Maybe it will work. Let's see. So that was good. Right? Tommy, hold on. Let's see, brother. So how do I get my laptop to use Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi? How do I do that? Okay, usually it doesn't make a difference there. All right. Let's see. Maybe it's going to get better. Let's just try. Oh, really? You want me to turn off the Wi-Fi on my laptop? Are you sure it's going to work? You mean up here where it says Wi-Fi? It says that turn Wi-Fi off where it's Aris CA4DG. Oh, turn it off? Serious? Okay. That's probably why. You sure I'm not going to lose the connection? Because I'm going to do it. That's why I am on Wi-Fi. Okay. Hey, I just did it. I turned the Wi-Fi off. That's what the problem was? Well, you wicked sinners, man. See, I'm telling you, I'm technically illiterate. I just turned it off and it worked. Bam. Man, so it is not Comcast. Com, Comcast. Are you kidding me? That means it's now just Ethernet? you kidding me. Now I'm excited. We found another solution. All right. But you got to admit, I'm looking good, am I? See, now that's why the connection is perfect, man. Man, guys, can you help me? I like to drink a lot of coffee, and I got coffee-stained teeth. And because my teeth are stained from coffee, when I smile, it's not the most attractive-looking set of teeth. And this way, I'm going to stay single for a long time. You know, I'm single, ready to mingle. I'm looking for a drop-dead gorgeous, born-again Christian who loves the Lord that at least looks like Jennifer Lopez. And because of Jesus, when she looks at me, she'll see Arnold Schwarzenegger, not Curly. Okay? Not Curly. Man, bro. Is that possible? But I don't think... With my coffee taint, uh, stained teeth, it's not going to happen. I brush my teeth. I get whiteners. It doesn't work, man. You know, now I'm excited. I did not know that connecting to the modem, you can turn off the Wi-Fi. You wicked sinners. Now, here's what I want to ask you sinners. Here, yeah, here's, here's what I want to ask you sinners. Okay. Does that mean if my Wi-Fi is off? I won't be using up as much megabits, so I'll have more megabits for the month, whatever you call them, the MBG, right? Oh, no? Okay. King of Kings, good luck believing that, buddy. I've yet to meet the godly woman that would love me. I don't blame her. Anyway. All right. 
No, it doesn't? So it doesn't matter. Okay. Thank the Lord Jesus. We found the solution, man. Here I'm thinking it's Comcast. It wasn't. And by the way, I don't have Comcast. Why would you guys say Comcast stinks? I got Cox. Here I am condemning Comcast, poor Comcast, because someone said Comcast. You little sinners, man. All right. Now, here's my problem, folks. CP is going to about to go live in 15 minutes, and I don't like to compete with Christian brothers, especially Christian brothers that I lose. Even if I were to compete with him, I'd still lose. He gets about 900, right? Because people, I maybe I should start talking like them. Abdul, 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 potato, you potato, you donkey. Maybe that way I can get 900. My goal is before the end of the year, I'm going to get 900 people to watch me in Jesus' name. If I stop blocking him, maybe I'd be there already. Right, because I want more people to listen to this. Captain Ron, I'm in full time ministry, bro brother. Do you understand? Full time ministry means we're not in it to make a fortune because our treasure is with Jesus. What we're trusting for is that God will provide sufficiently for our daily bread, especially for my girls, so that they never feel neglected or lack nothing. So if I keep buying expensive stuff, I'm going to have to be living in my car and getting Com Comcast, Cox, to set up a router in my car, right, so I can afford all these things. What's wrong with you? Potato. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. All right. Potato. We're down. Now, that's not a good number. We're down to 66. 66 is not a good number, folks. Hit that like button. Pray we get about 200. I'm looking for at least that 160 we got at one time. Right. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. You are discussing a better topic. Okay, folks. What's the Miss, uh, Mr. Jerkins? DJ Next. What's Mr. Good to see you, brother. DJ Next. Uh, wait, that's not DJ News. That's DJ Next. That's the brother I met. I won't mention your name, but we met you. At, at church. God bless you and, and your family and preserve you for the glory of Christ. All of you guys. May the Lord Jesus bless all of you. So let's begin in prayer. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, Son of God, we love you. You are the Father's beloved, His Son. You are His heart that became flesh. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, we desperately need you. In fact, though we know we need you, we don't realize how much we need you, how much we depend on you, on the Lord Jesus, and on your Holy Spirit. Because apart from you, Father, apart from your Son, your Word, apart from your Spirit, not only could we not live biologically, <clears throat> we couldn't live <clears throat> emotionally, we couldn't, couldn't live mentally, psychologically, and we couldn't live spiritually. So we thank you for the grace <clears throat> and the mercy and the love that comes from you, Father, from your Son, the Lord Jesus, from your Spirit. We thank you for the gift of life, biological life spiritual life. We thank you for sustaining us in spite of all the damages that the world has hurled on us, in spite of all the brokenness around us, in spite of <clears throat> going through the experiences that many of us have gone through, whether broken homes, broken marriages, broken families, either being abused, Father, emotionally or even physically or verbally, Father. No matter what we have seen or gone through, you have preserved us father you have sustained us and you continue to preserve and sustain us because we are broken vessels father we are damaged goods broken by the evil one satan and the kingdom of darkness because his influence is all over the world and he seeks to destroy all your image bearers all human beings because he hates them because you love them he hates us because you love us father and in spite of what satan has done to us what he's doing to us now, and what he will do until the Lord Jesus returns. You are almighty over Satan because Satan is still a creature under your sovereign control. He is a dog on your leash, Father. And you're infinitely greater than him, and your love is infinitely more powerful than him. And as long as you flood us in your love, Father, and the love of Jesus and the love of your spirit, as long as you flood us in the blood of the Lamb and wash us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, and flood us in your living waters, Holy Spirit. We will overcome the evil one. We will conquer. We are more than conquerors because of the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ, who has crushed the head of the serpent under his feet. And in union with Jesus, we have overcome and crushed the evil one. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Help us, Father. Give us the health we need to be used by your spirit to glorify you. And give us the power to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. To lift up holy hands and the fruit of our lips, sanctified by your spirit, washed in the blood of Jesus, to be acceptable to you, Father. Give us the grace to live for you, to love you, to obey you, to fear you, to worship you, to sing to you, to pray to you, and to serve others for the sake of Jesus. Grant us eyes to see and ears to hear. And Father, anoint this session. Enable me to recall scriptures and interpret them correctly. Save me from error and stammering. And bless your people. Bring them, Father. Bring them in droves to listen by your spirit using me for the glory of Jesus. Bless them, Father. Illuminate our minds and our hearts. And give us the power to not only understand, but to live your word perfectly. And love your word and proclaim it even unto death, Father. And Father, be with, my, with our loved ones. In my case, my precious angels, my daughters. Fight my battles for their sake, Father. I deserve your judgment. I deserve your wrath. So give me your grace, your mercy, your compassion, love for their sake, my daughter's sake. Bring them into my arms this year, sooner than later. And convict all the agents of the devil who seek to destroy our union, Father. Protect me from them. Protect my daughters. Protect everyone here from their enemies and from our ultimate enemy, Satan. By covering us with the blood of Jesus and sealing us by your spirit and surrounding us with a wall of fire from your Holy Spirit, Father. We know you are God. You are real. You are life. You are reality. We live because you live. And we thank you for hearing us for the sake of Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Increase in us and sit and throne upon our hearts, upon the hearts of my daughters. And we love you, Holy Spirit. Guide this conversation, Holy Spirit. Have your way. And bless everyone here, Holy Spirit. And bless the moderators who serve me to serve the people of God, the church, by your power. We thank you in Jesus' name. Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. Lord, Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Bring them, Father. Bring them, Lord Jesus. Bring them, Holy Spirit. Yahovah Rapha. Yahovah Rapha. Yahovah Rapha. Heal us and wash us by the wounds and the stripes of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus, we are healed. We are made whole. Give us shalom. Yahovah shalom. Yahovah shalom. Yahovah shalom in Jesus' name. Good to see you, Dinu. God bless you guys. Yeah. It's not buffering as bad, right? Everything good? All right, sorry, I keep hitting the table. Sorry about that. Amen, Khuni. God bless you, David. We have a brother in the Lord Jesus Christ who is from my people, who is an Aturaya. We are Suraya Aturaya in Jesus' name. Right? See, this is how good and beautiful Jesus is. He raises up believers, soldiers from every tribe, from every language, every nation. And here I am. Here I am. An Assyrian. Right? Aturaya, slave of Jesus, being used of Jesus to shine his light among my people and to the world. And there are many other Assyrians. Glory to God, Father, Son, Spirit. 112 pounds, city champ, huh? You're only 112 pounds, man. You know, I used to be 112 pounds too, David. Are you really 112 pounds, brother? What's LBS? I don't know what LBS is. I will speak Aramaic in a minute, David and Louis, Julius. I'll bless you guys in Assyrian. Guys, I have a lot of articles to give you. So I'm going to post links to my articles. Promise me. Promise me. You're going to click on the links, save the articles, study them, and pass them on because they're meat. And they go with the session. So I'm going to post it. But now someone wants me to, oh, okay, that's what LBS means, champ. Okay, so I guess he's a boxer. What are you, a boxer? Amundsen City Champ. What, wrestling, brother? Uh, I used to hang out in Amundsen. Aturaya. Are you Aturaya too? Thou shalt not pontificate? Okay. Let me bless you guys in my mother tongue, the Assyrian. Praise God, brother, David. Keep learning uh, wrestling. Perfect your craft of wrestling. Because when we get into Christian Jihad, I'll throw you in the midst of Muslims so you can take them to the ground and choke them out and pin them. All right? Guys, don't give away too much information where you're from. All these places I know. Von Steuben, Amundsen, Sen High School, right? Yeah. God bless you, Tommy. Are you also a Syrian from there? Yeah, this is like, yeah, this is all from my neck of the woods. Chicago, the land of Sodom and Gomorrah that I escaped from. May the Lord grant you repentance to leave that too. Anyway, let me bless you guys in a Syrian. You ready? 
Are you guys ready? Shana Azizi, thou shalt not pontificate. I didn't know you were a Syrian. Taking my, my famous line, pontificate, and turning it into the 12th commandment. Only Assyrians would do that. Only Assyrians would dare to add more commandments than the Ten Commandments. He just added the 12th commandment. Thou shalt not pontificate. Okay, let me bless you guys in Assyrian. Ready? Shemit Baba Ubruna Uruchat Kacha. How Chlapit Maran Isham Shicha. Brunit Alaha Echidaya. Alahan Uparukan. Brunt Mat Mariam Ptulta. Kadishta. Chelit Maran Isham Shicha. Chelit. Shimmit Ishu Nasraya, Brunit Alaha, Alahan Uparukan, Barh Kullan, Ya Maran Ishum Shiha, Ya Alahan Uchayan, Uliban, Barhlan, Kullan, Dich Lacha Jimia, Barh Betutan, Barh Zaranan, Barh Hunwatan, Hatwatan, Awahatan, and in a Rukam Nuk, and in a Kurba Luhao Kullan, Kurba Libuk, Ya Maran. يا الله يا إيشو نصرايا الله وباروقا ولبا وخيا وشولانا وبلخانا وزوزا إلى ديو خيامار نشمشيخا كل من ديت أتلا إلى ديو خيامار نشمشيخا تشبخت الشم خيامار يا بارخ لن خاملا يود مخبا يود لبا يا مارا يبا يخلخ يمخ بخلخ بلا شمخ وبلا سقيبخ وبلا دمخ لتلا خيوتا إيوت خيوتا يا إيشو يا مارن يا آلهن إيشو مشيخة برونت آلها برونت داود برونت مطمن يمتلخة شمخ إيخ بطلابة شمت مارن إيشو مشيخة أمي All right That was a prayer Okay, you guys ready? Those who speak Assyrian understood everything I said No, I don't know the Lord's prayer in Assyrian, unfortunately. I'm going to learn it one day. Yep, that was Assyrian. Syriac. Offshoot of Aramaic. That's what I just prayed. There are a lot of Assyrians and Chaldeans here. They understood everything I said. So those of you who are Assyrian Chaldean who understand uh, the dialects that came forth from Aramaic, Syriac, put a one here so people can see how many you are. I got to crack my neck. Oh, that feels good. Oh, that feels so good. And they understood what we what I was saying. See, Satya Raja. Okay, okay, folks. With that said, let me give you the links. You gotta save the links, Zina. Why your parents need to repent? Are you sure they didn't adopt you? You know what? You can give up your parents and find a new set of parents, Zina. All right, here you go, guys. Save these articles. All these articles are related to these sessions. Save them. Click on the links. You have my permission to upload them to your websites, even print them out, use them in your studies, just as long as you mention the URL, right? And you don't sell them. Freely receive, freely you give. But if you do sell them, if you do sell them, I want 100% of the proceeds, right? Here you go. Save this link. Okay, I'm going to post it twice. That's one, okay? I'm going to give you the one I did on Psalm 82 in a minute. Save these links so we can begin. We're going to do the second part of Psalm 82. All this time, as I'm hooked to the modem, I had internet on. Why am I so stupid, Andy? But guys, aren't you thankful for the brothers and sisters who God has blessed with this technological savvy to know how to work a computer? Protestant, first, last, Andrew Martin, even radical moderate. What a blessing they are in helping me to help you because I didn't know any of this stuff. But I thank the Lord for them. They don't get paid to do what they do. They're here because they love Jesus and they want to serve me to serve you for the sake of Jesus. Okay, that article, that was one. Here's another one. Guys, please save these links. There's a lot of meat in these articles. And Lord willing, I'll be doing sessions on them. And I actually am doing on one of them. But let me get you the other articles, okay? Here's a couple more. Okay, how many thrones did the prophet Daniel see? Okay, I'll explain to you why these articles are important. Save them. Study them, pass them on to others. Here's the second article. Okay, I'm posting the link to each article twice. Okay, that is how many thrones did, David, did the prophet Daniel see? Now, Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. The sons of God of Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. Angels or the children of Israel. So here is now the third article. If you're counting now, this is the third article. Okay, and God willing, either first, last, or... Protestant will put these links in the description box. So remember, you can find these links in the description box. 
Here is now the third article, okay? The third article. How are you, Belenia? Good to see you, brother. Let me just charge my... Uh, did Cambello Cam leave? Hold on. Cambello leave? Okay. That's the third article. And here I have an addendum to the Sons of God, Deuteronomy 32.8. Revisit it. So now there's the fourth article. The fourth article. What what page? What are you talking about? Yes, I did. You mean my blog? Yes, I posted some new articles. I usually update my blog two to three times a week. I'm constantly writing and researching. Remember, as I said, this is now, I believe, is this the fourth article? Save them. Okay. This is now, I, uh, this is now the fourth article I gave you. But as far as updating my blog, I try to do it two or three times a week. The reason why I try to do it two or three times a week, because that's what I do. Since 1999, I asked the Lord for a sign if he wanted me to do full-time ministry. Just devote myself to ministry and nothing else. And he gave me a clear sign, and I've been doing full-time ministry, which is why if you go to my blog and my uh, articles on Answering Islam, I think right now I have over 200 articles covering every major subject. In depth by the grace of the triune God. I think so. I haven't counted. Right? And so what do I do? So you guys know I'm not a lazy bum. I try every day to do more research, study more, you know, objections, contrary opinions to the ones that I hold. Also study books from scholars that I agree with. And I try to focus on the Bible because that's God's word because you got to listen to the Bible. Look. It's not about studying. It's about worshiping Jesus, loving Jesus, speaking to Jesus, and letting Jesus speak to you. It's a relationship. The goal of the Christian life is to have an intimate relationship with God. How does God speak to you? Through the word, the Bible. That's primary. He can also speak to you in dreams and visions, which are secondary, or through the mouths of two or three witnesses. God is constantly speaking to you, right, and guiding you and overseeing you. But the primary way and the absolutely certain way that you know God speaks to you is when you hear the Bible or read the Bible with understanding. And then God wants you to speak to him. How do you speak to him? Prayer. Right? Prayer. Sorry, it, it's, it froze for a second. It's freezing again. All right, I don't know. Okay, sorry about that. It, I don't know why it's freezing. Sorry about that. Is it freezing on my end or your end? Prayer. Okay, prayer. He wants you to pray to him. And when you pray, you thank him, you praise him, you glorify him, and then speak your heart to him. Speak your heart to him. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you for being God. Thank you for who you are. You are worthy of praise and majesty and glory. You are beautiful and you're holy. And Father, I'm hurting now. Lord Jesus, I'm hurting now. I'm lonely, Lord. Son of God, I'm lonely. Speak to him. He is your friend. He is your brother. He is your father who adores you, who is in love with you. Speak to him. Okay? Speak to him. Sing to him. Right? Sing to him. He wants you to sing. And he wants you to speak to him. Right? Do that. That's your life. That's the goal. I need to repeat this. Your goal is not to study apologetics or theology and just acquire knowledge. Your goal, your goal is to... Love God, love Jesus, talk to Jesus, trust in Jesus, walk with Jesus, have fellowship with Jesus, to let Jesus speak to you, to let Jesus love you, to let Jesus have fellowship with you. That's your goal in life. It's the truth. Sometimes we get so caught up in apologetics and theology, and we think that's it. No, 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 that's not it. Your focus, let me repeat, is to have a relationship with the living God, the living God who is real. And how do you have a relationship with him? Talk to him. He's real. He's not imaginary. Talk to him the way you're talking to me. You don't have to see him visibly to know he's listening and he will respond and he's speaking to you. He speaks to your heart and your mind. He puts ideas in your heart and mind. He can even speak audibly if he wants to. And he'll speak at, with the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? And he definitely speaks to you when you pick up the Bible, right? And when you're hurt, I do that. I say, Lord Jesus, I'm hurting. Lord, I'm lonely. Lord, I'm afraid. 
Please help me, Lord. That's the goal of your Christian walk, to have a relationship with him, to walk with him, to know he hears you, he walks with you, he loves you, and he's more real than the things you see and the people around you. He's more real than that. And he'll never betray you. He'll never turn his back on you. You can always trust him. He won't throw you under the bus. This is the truth. So I need to remind you of that. I need to remind, remind you of that. My goal as a teacher by the power of the Holy Spirit is to be used by the Spirit to make you fall madly in love with Jesus. If you have fallen more in love with Jesus, I have accomplished my goal as a teacher. So I'm about to cry. Honestly, I am. I've become a bigger sissy now as I'm getting older. I cry more often than I ever did. Because no greater joy, no greater joy than to see people that you're teaching in love with Jesus. Right? In tears from a heart filled with love for Jesus. You know, because Jesus is good. <clears throat> so I'm again moved in my spirit. He's too good. And he's real, right? So remember, that's your goal in life. That's your goal in life, to know Jesus. It's not about listening to debates. It's not about learning theology for the sake of theology. It's not about, about it's not, guys, it's not. This is why some, sometimes it, it does sadden me. It does sadden me. When I'll see channels, live streams, people, about a thousand people there, and the entire channel live stream is to attack another religion. You have to attack other religions that are false. But people will flock to that. But when it comes to, let's say, just learning about your faith and how to live it as an expression of your love for Jesus, because you want to show him you love him, you don't have too many people coming. Right? That's the thing. I really want, from my heart, to see people that listen to me fall in love with Jesus. That's the thing. I really want, from my heart, to see people that listen to me fall in love with Jesus. Because they're in love with Jesus. <clears throat> you know? Because they're in love with Jesus. Because you can't love him enough. And I definitely don't love him enough. I need to love him more. I can't, and I say this to you from my heart. I'm saying this from my heart. I love him imperfectly to my shame. But I can't imagine life without Jesus. I can't. I can't do it. I'm at a point now, I can't live without Jesus. I can't. If someone were to convince me Jesus didn't exist, my life is over. That's how real he is to me. He is my life. And I'm not just saying it. And I fail him miserably. I'm not saying I'm a holy. I'm not. I got so many sinful desires and carnal lusts and, that I struggle with. But my hope is in Jesus. That Jesus, <clears throat> Lord, please. Lord. <clears throat> no, never, Zena. Zena, I can tell you, honest to God, I have no doubt Christianity is true and Jesus is alive. None. God is listening. I have no doubt. Absolutely none. But that doesn't mean I live for Jesus the way I should. That's what kills me. I know how it really is. I know the Bible is his word, and yet I still fail him. I still fail him. But I can tell you, I can tell you, I can't live without him. I can't. And I'm not just saying it, put on a show in front of you guys. I can't live without the Lord. You know? That's why when, uh, when Joe's witnesses say to me, and I'm going to go into the session, I got another article, but I felt I need to emphasize this. These sessions are not just about becoming apologists or theologians. It's about knowing the depth of the Bible, the beauty of the Bible, to see how deep and beautiful our God is, how real he is, so you can fall in love with him. Okay? Fall in love with him. Now, Joe's witnesses tell me that if I'm part of the great cloud, I can be given the hope of living in a paradise on earth. Earth will become like, like the Garden of Eden before sin. So the earth will be a paradise. No more sin, no more suffering, no more death. Okay? But Jesus won't be dwelling with us because Jesus is good. Excuse me. Remain in heaven invisible. You know what? You know what? That's hell for me. That's hell for me. You know why? Heaven is not a place for me. 
heaven is a person. Jesus is my heaven. And if I don't see him, that's not heaven. That's hell. Jesus is my heaven. So heaven is not a place for me. Heaven is a person. I want this to sink in. Okay. I want this to sink in. Heaven is not a place for the believer. Heaven is a person. Jesus is our heaven. If Jesus is not in heaven, I don't want to be there. If Jesus is not on earth, I don't want to be there. I want to be where Jesus is. Let me repeat it again. I'm going to get moved in my spirit. <clears throat> Heaven is not a place. Heaven's a person. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why it's buffering. I'm not on the I'm not on the Wi-Fi, but anyway. Okay, sorry. It's okay. It's much better than yesterday, I guess, right? So we're trusting. It's much better and it's going to get better in Jesus name. So remember, guys, heaven is not a place, it's a person. I'm going to share a st true story with you guys. Can I share a story with you guys? When I began my journey into apologetics. Okay. I'm going to tell you a prayer that I said at night. Okay. True story. I'm not making this up. And don't think I'm a saint. Well, we're all saints and that God has set us apart. But believe me, folks, I got so many carnal inclinations that I struggle with. I got so many personality issues that I struggle with. I hmm. yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Pray it doesn't buffer. I'm connected now and I turn off the Wi-Fi. Anyway, I don't want people to think that I am some holy. I'm not. I want to be. This is why I'm disappointed. Okay. Okay, now let me share this true story. And we're trusting the Lord that he's going to keep the connection strong. And this is just an attempt of Satan to attack, but Jesus has crushed him and recovered by the blood of Jesus. Okay, now watch here. True story. When I first came into apologetics, the reason why is I was attacked by a Muslim. And he rocked my face so badly that I remember in the 90s I went to bed thinking maybe Jesus isn't really who he said, to, he's, who he, said he was. Now understand. Understand where I'm coming with this. Maybe Jesus isn't the Messiah. Maybe he's not the Son of God. I started doubting. You know what happened to me? True story. Not lying. I got on my bed. You know what I said? I spoke to God, meaning the Father. You know what I said? You guys, you want to hear this? And I mean this. I'm not just saying to put on a show. And we'll begin the session, hopefully. I mean this. <clears throat> I got one more article to give you. I said, God, if Jesus isn't who I thought he was, if he's not the Son of God, he's not the Messiah, and if he is, now understand, I was confused here. Understand, now watch. Watch here. And if he's in hell, then I want to be in hell with Jesus because I have yet to meet someone as loving and kind as him. And I started crying. I go, if he's in hell, I want to be with him because I have yet to meet someone as loving and compassionate as Jesus. Where he is, I want to be. <clears throat> right? That was in my moments of doubting who he was, but he was so good to me and so loving to me, I couldn't imagine, right, that he wasn't who he really claimed to be, right? And glory to God, look where I'm at now. I wasn't saying it to be irreverent, right? I just didn't know. I was doubting, and I just said to God, I go, where he is, I want to be. So if he's in hell, I want to go there. That's what I said. Look at me now. Look at me now. Glory, glory be his name. Right? So let me repeat this. If we if you forget anything, okay. If you forget anything, I want you to take this away with you from this session. It's not about apologetics. It's not about theology. Ask God to purify your hearts. Pedro, God bless you for that confession. It's about knowing him. It's about falling in love with him it's about walking with him it's about talking to him folks if you believe jesus alive that means he's more real than even the person that you see physically 
And if you believe Jesus, uh, what he says, he's with you now. He's with you now. He says, I am in them. Talk to him. Talk to him. He's there. He's there. Jesus, I love you. I may not see with my visible eyes, but by the eyes of faith, I know you're here and you're watching. In fact, if you want to honor him, just look up. Not because he's up there, but to show that he's exalted. Lord, I love you. I'm in love with you because you're in love with me. Lord, I need you. And then tell him how you feel. Tell him. Speak to him. Lord, I'm, I'm depressed. Lord, I feel betrayed. Lord, I'm hurt. Lord, this person insulted me, hurt my heart. Can you help me, Lord? Can you help me, Lord? Okay. And let me show you how real he is. I want to share this story. I've shared it in the past. I'm going to share it again. Okay. I shared this story in the past. I'll share it again. A young seven-year-old boy, a young seven-year-old boy witnessed his father and mother get into a fight. And his father having leave the house because the mother was fed up with his father's womanizing. So he left so that she could stay home. Guys, true story. That young seven-year-old boy, he was close to seven, went into the alley of the apartment building he was living. It's close to 10 at night. Guys, listen to this. True story. The young boy looked up and he said, Jesus, I'm not asking for you to show yourself. I need someone to comfort me. Please, Jesus, send me someone to comfort me. Before that young boy could finish his prayer, at the other end of the alley, a man turns the cor corner, close to 10 at night, wearing carpenter's clothes and a carpenter's hat, hands in his pocket, and he's whistling. Wavy black hair, like black mustache. He looks at that young boy and he says, kid, what are you doing out so late? Are you homeless? The boy says, no. That man then sits next to the boy on his left. He goes, are you hungry? No. What's wrong? And the boy told him, <clears throat> my father and mother broke up. My father left. And that man looked in the eyes of that young boy. And he said to him, Jesus loves you. And he will never leave you. That was the last time that young boy saw that man. And I am that young boy. I am the boy that cried out to Jesus when I was close to seven. And I'm the boy that my Lord Jesus from heaven sent that angel, maybe it was even him, to sit next to me. Right? Don't know. Okay. So when I tell you, and I mean this, guys, let me just share it with you again. I am a pathetic excuse for a Christian. I'm a path pathetic excuse for a Christian because I failed Jesus. When my carnal desires that I want to overcome and I struggle with and my anger issues and my personality disorders, you know. But I can tell you one thing. I cannot live without Jesus. <laughs> I can't live without them. I can't. I can live without my daughters, who I haven't seen since June. I can live without my mother and father, who left me and are now in heaven. I can be alone in an apartment. But I cannot be alone without Jesus. I can't do it. <clears throat> I don't want to. I don't want to live without Jesus. And this is what the goal of your life should be. It's not acquiring knowledge. It's not learning how to debate, refute heretics. It's about knowing him, knowing how beautiful he is, how amazing he is, how real he is, how much he loves us, and falling in love with him. Okay? Just want to remind you of that. We need to be reminded. It's not just about apologetics, right? It's not just about apologetics. Let me give you the final article so we can begin. Okay, You save the links. They'll be in the description box, all these articles. So here's the other one. This one goes with the topic, Psalm 82. You know, I've written a lot of articles, and I forgot I wrote this article. I wrote an article on Psalm 82. Is it referring to heavenly beings or human rulers? Okay. Okay. Here it goes. I'm going to post it. You guys ready now? 
Should I? Here's what I should I do. Should I continue or should I close this session and retitle it? Falling in love with Jesus and start another session right away. Because it's already 46 minutes and maybe, or should I just continue on this session? Right? Because if I close, I'm going to start right away. Don't think I'm not. I mean, because I was thinking it's 46 minutes where we just talked about being in love with Jesus. It could be a session on its own and then I can do another section. Okay, continue. How many guys say just continue? How many guys just want me to continue? It's up to you guys. I'm here to serve you guys. Okay. Okay, good. Protestant believer will leave it on and then he'll be able to split up into good, good. All right. But again, what Protestant said, he'll do it later. He'll break it down in two. See, again, this guy is blessing you. He's doing this without getting paid. He comes and he beatifies my YouTube channel, downloads videos, and he puts thumbnails. So, okay. He'll do it for us. We can continue. All right. He'll do it. He said he'll split it. He'll split it up. Yes, Antonio. That's not me. That's Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'll never leave nor forsake you. And I'm living proof. He's never left nor forsaken me. Okay. It should be beautiful. All right. Guess what, folks? Enough of you said, just leave it by itself. Guess what? We will retitle this, and I'll shut it down, and I'll start another one. All right? I'm going to do it. We'll retitle. So let's shut down, and I'll open up in five minutes. Are you going to be back? You promise? You going to be back in five minutes? God willing, let's do this. All right. So you can retitle, but save the links to the articles. And first, last, put them in the description box. Guys, you got to come back because we're already 105. By the time we're back, I want to see 105 and you more, Lord willing, because I want this session just to be titled Falling in Love with Jesus. We're going to retitle it Falling in Love with Jesus. We should say the goal of Christians, fall in love with Jesus. All right, let's retitle it. Okay, I'll be right back.